Good morning. Okay, I'm sorry. I uh, was snacking on some crunchy beef. Let me have a sip. Now, I wanted to show this to you. Where's the box? I haven't had roasted dandelion for a long time. Well, let me just say, hello. How are you? My name's Martine. Welcome if you're new here. And welcome back to all the friends. Today we are going to vlog day 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. But let me tell you, I'm on day 88 today, about to finish my 90-day commitment. And Emma and I were thinking through what we were going to do next. Um, it's on my glasses. I thought it was in my eye, but it's on my glasses. And so I'm going to tell you about that in the next vlog, which I will do. It'll be up in the next couple of days. Whew. Exciting things are happening. So I will get to what I've eaten for those five days shortly. But I was looking for an alternative to coffee. I love tea, absolutely love tea. But I have, an, I have acquired a taste for coffee over, I mean, I'm just a tea drinker, but I have acquired a, a taste for coffee over the recent years. And I've tried this before and haven't really persisted with it. But it is very good for liver health. I will just read this to you. It's dandelion, first of all. Okay, organic dandelion. Um, it has a bit of taste. It stimulates digestion and supports liver health. So, and detoxification. So, very, very good. Very, very good. Quite well known for that. And, yeah, I've just made myself a cuppa with cream. I boiled the water too hot. I don't know about you, but I have a kettle that you can choose your temperature. And I normally put it on, I think it's oolong tea, which is 75 degrees, maybe 80. And I didn't. I boiled it full and it's so hot. Ah. But I'm enjoying it. Like, I remember last time I sort of went on a dandelion stint and... I only had one or two cups and went, mm, not feeling it. But I, I'm actually really enjoying this. Mm. Okay, I've got, I've got my, should we call it coffee? No. I've got, they call it tea. It's definitely not tea. I've got my drink. Now, I know you haven't seen this cup. I had this made <laughs> a few years ago. But here's a good, here's some good news. Here's a good report. I have not been able to get my hand around it because of pain in both hands, more in my right hand. I am right-handed. I'm a little bit ambidextrous. And so I sort of put it away, sort of. It's like everything was retired. Everything's coming out now. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my clothes in a minute. Um, but I love this cup because I'm a glitter girl. I love glitter. And I specifically asked for this style. Um, it's obviously got my name on it. And it's amazing. I can put big ice blocks, even some smaller ice blocks in here, and fill it up with water. Or it could be like half full. I've gone to bed, got up in the morning like eight hours later, and there's still ice in here and a good amount of ice. It's a very good, it's a good quality um tumbler anyway that's just i've just got water and no my ice has melted i know anyway now that i'm fully hydrated and i've had lots to drink <laughs> and i've eaten i've been crunching away oh this is so good guys if you have not made this you've got to make it i have one recipe on the channel but i've just been filming um i did this in batches i've been filming it yesterday so it will be up in a few days. I'm really behind on some of my recipe videos. I don't know. It just feels like so much is going on right now. 
I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> uh, I, I am, I, I do have a lot going on. I have an Etsy shop and I'm making all the planners for 2025 and, and I've got to get to the journals as well because I make journals as well. And they have calendars in them and they're dated in different ways and some are undated, whatever. So um, I do have a heavy workload for the next couple of months. I don't know how long it will take me, but in between doing this um, this extra vlogging. But this stuff is fantastic. I, I'm actually not using it instead of meals, which is good for me because that's not a good habit. I'm actually eating meals the whole time and I haven't had any for a while but there are some times when I just want something crunchy and I can have literally I can have like that's two bits there and maybe another couple and, and I'm good I don't even need to bother with anything right it just satisfies my brain satisfies my texture it's crunchy super crunchy oh my gosh i've got quite a bit i bought a beef knuckle i might as well put the footage up just to show you and then we'll get on to what i ate a beef knuckle so here in australia try and work out what a beef knuckle is like honestly the the names we call every all of our meats are not the names in america so while i'm busy learning in america uh, not in america <laughs> on youtube about different big cuts because this is how I can save money, right? I can't find these things here because we don't call them those things. So anyway, I kept seeing on, I've been, I've ordered now three times from Dirty Clean Foods. It's grass fed, grass finished. Now that's not really in my budget, but because, but, and certainly not from that company because they charge, you know, a higher price point. But if I get a bulk meat from, the, I can, I can definitely, it, it is so much cheaper buying a bulk cut. I'm trying to find the right words and then slicing it yourself or doing whatever you want with it. So I've been spending time researching all that so that I can do that because I get grass fed, grass finished, and it's still cheaper than what I could get the same meat that isn't grass fed, grass finished here, even at the beef shed um, or at Farmer Jack's um, is another place I've gone to, the one near my daughter's, Emma. That's really cool. I went to the one near me and mm, that wasn't as good. But anyway, I'm just sticking with Dirty Clean Food bulk cuts. It's the bulk cuts. The other food is very expensive, like you'll pay $40 for two steaks, right? Um, and I like scotch or ribeye. They're the sorts of steaks I like. I, I've actually more... Um, Sorry, Scotch is ribeye. Same thing. Porterhouse in Australia, Scotch and Porterhouse are the names for ribeye and New York strip. Um, I know a porterhouse over in America is actually like the T-bone. It's just the fuller, it's the fuller cut, which I, oh, geez, wow. I just learned that recently. So when I say porterhouse, it means something completely different in America. That's equivalent to like our T-bone, but our T-bone doesn't always have both pieces of meat intact. Anyway, so um, I digress. Yes, Dirty Clean Food is, uh, it's good quality and so you, you pay for that because it's grass fed, grass finished. Right. But I just, I went on there and I kept seeing this beef knuckle and I thought, okay, what is this beef knuckle? And I it was YouTubing how to cut it up. What what cuts can I get out of it? Um, turns out it's top sirloin. Beef knuckle is top sirloin. There you go. There you go, Martine. It is towards the back of the animal. So a lot of the lean leaner meat is towards the back of the animal. The good news for us is that that leaner meat is also cost less because they seem to charge more for all the meat with the fat, which is up the front of the animal, and under the belly and, you know, look, obviously the loin and the eye fillets in the middle, you know, in, in the middle part of the animal, right in there, inside. So I thought, yeah, let's get the beef knuckle. It's the top sirloin. I could find more videos on how to cut up the top sirloin. So that was good. But 
you know what a lot of people and i just did a lot of re recipe research and a lot of people it's very lean it is very lean um and that's not a bad thing lean is not a dirty word for carnivore okay i'm just i just want to put that out there just a moment just a moment lean isn't a dirty word lean equals do you know what lean equals i'm gonna show you lean equals crunchy beef and beef jerky that's currently what i've got on my roster but my recipe roster with lean beef also a nice beef stew ah oh, wait till i tell you what i did mm -mm. yes and i used red wine yes i did it was very simple very simple recipe it was beef stock or actually i used a bit of chicken stock as well whatever stock i had in the freezer plus probably half to three quarters of a cup of red wine i obviously um cooked off the alcohol um because it doesn't taste good if you don't do that so i seared uh, this this meat the top sirloin so the beef knuckle i ended up it's like really round and really and i cut it in big thick slices half of it I've sous vide in three bags. It's just finished um, an hour ago. The other half, I put all in the pressure cooker. I added whatever stock I could find. I've actually got two cups of stock left that were in a, that are in a different part of my freezer. But I grabbed all the stock that I had, popped. I I actually didn't even add any water. I just put that in. Uh, that was after. Sorry, I seared. I used the saute function on my Instant Pot. I seared all the, um, I cut it into two pieces, the bit that was left, the half that was left, cut it into two pieces to fit in the Instant Pot. It shrunk heaps. I I could have jammed a bit more in there. Um, seared it all till it all got brown. I've got a bit of footage. And then I poured in the red wine, burnt off the alcohol, cooked off the alcohol, and then I added in the frozen stock that I, it was just frozen. I just threw it in, put the lid on, pressure cooked it for 35 minutes, 40 minutes. You don't want to cook lean meat too long. A pressure cooker is a powerful thing and you do not want to cook it. Look, if someone tells you to cook it for an hour and a half, don't believe them. <laughs> just You will end up with, oh, yuck, 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 yuck. Now, Chuck, when you've got fatty meat that's got a lot of connective tissue and a lot of fat in it, yes, it can take a longer cook in the Instant Pot. But still, you still the Instant Pot, pressure cookers are powerful. So that's all this is. is. Then what happened is I pulled it out, popped it in a glass container because I wasn't ready. I didn't know what to do. I, I ate some. You'll see that I ate, I had, a few bowlfuls of it, so delicious. The broth was amazing, amazing. Um, Sam had some, Paul had some, they loved it. So I packed it away in the fridge for a few days and then I pulled it out and I went, okay, now <laughs> i got to do it. And I, you know what? I'm just going to do crunchy beef. So I needed three loads in my Ninja, again, with the Ninja Air Fryer, the Ninja Foodie Grill. The dehydrate function is amazing for making chicken flour. I'm sure it'll be good for beef flour. I haven't done that yet. Um, crunchy beef, dehydrating. Yeah, I watched heaps of videos on that uh, appliance before buying it and no one used the dehydrator at all. It was just a fluke that I thought I'd use it for the chicken flour because <laughs> what a drama that was when I first made it. <laughs> like I... I know the quick version now, but that was that was a very long process. The dehydrator is amazing. It only goes up to 90 degrees, which is fine. And um, yeah, two and a half hours really for a full tray of, you know, wet meat. Like it had, the last one it took longer. I poured all the rest of the juice, juice and broth in it and did it for four hours. So, but two and a half hours on dehydrate 90 so easy so good and then you've got mm, i'll insert a photo because i can't reach them and so here are all the crunchy bits
they're delicious so delicious This will last me a good while. It's awesome. Then you've got your crunchy beef. I've put them in here in my room so the boys don't just polish them off. So, beef knuckle. Cheap meat. This is what I was saying. So, Yes, I decided to use that for, um, and the other half is sous vide. I'm hoping it'll come out a bit like the thick flank that I bought right back when we started. I had this amazing, what was it, skirt? Thick skirt? Thick flank? I can't remember. Um, it was one of those two. I'd never had it before. I sous vide it, and then it was amazing. I just, you know, portioned it up. And I, you know, over a month, I just worked my way through it. All right, so I'm doing well. Just, I'm doing well. It's, I feel like I'm just plodding along. I've got a lot of work on, as I said. So um, I'm taping a lot of things, videoing a lot of things, set up. I've had to get a few bit more, um, not cameras, but equipment, like uh, <laughs> lights and stands because... I can't stand it when you can't film properly and um, I don't have the energy to set up a new station every single time. So I have a couple of stations that are already done. So there's heaps going on for me, lots going on. I don't know what's going on for you. How are you going? <laughs> oh, thank you to for everyone who's commenting and um, I appreciate, you know, your different um, different people chiming in, letting me know how they're going. I love that. And, um, you know, asking questions or sharing tidbits of information. Love that too. All right. So, all right. The vibration plate's amazing. Just thought you might want to know. Amazing. I will say in summary for the vibration plate, I was starting to do like two hour sessions <laughs> at a time. Two hour, and so I was doing three to four hours a day. And then I noticed my legs swelled up, which they don't normally, like down by my ankles. And so after a couple of days of the vibration plate, <clears throat> that started happening. So I didn't, I, I'm wondering if I'm overworking them. I am sitting down on it. I, I am, I have, I do stand for a very short period of time, like 30 seconds. And then it's, my body starts hurting. So then I hop off and I, and I, use it mainly but i mean it vibrates right up i can feel it up in my tummy the vibration if i put my hand on my knees i all my hands vibrate so it's you know it's it certainly is a workout <clears throat> which may be hard to understand but it is a workout so that's going well i i the last few days i've dialed it back sorry <coughs> the last few days i've dialed it back to because there's program sessions and i was doing up to 10 which is where I got two hours from. I've dialed it back to five uh, different programs. Last night I only did three and yesterday morning I think I did four. So, you know, that's less time. And I don't think I had swollen feet last night. Swollen ankles. Interesting. So that's going well anyway. I'm really appreciating it. I love it. I'm so grateful for it. Um, and the other thing I'm doing um, with this pain in my right knee my brother-in-law was telling me about magnesium and turmeric. So I it just arrived. I actually didn't expect it for until next week. <laughs> I ordered it from iHerb. If you want to support me at all and support this channel, feel free to use my links down below. That would be greatly appreciated. There's obviously no pressure at all. But some people do ask all the things. So I try and put the links down for everything. But I have an iHerb page if you want to use my link and go that way. Um, if you want to see what I use, I have all the things written there. So that's the oven beeper because yesterday, 
Um, I'm going to do some bulk meats in the oven, not on the smoker, because I've had some questions from different viewers wanting to know how to cook the same thing in the oven. So yesterday I cooked the beef navel end, which is, this is what we call it in Australia, um, beef bacon. It's that cut of meat. Um, I have not, I did not cure it like bacon. I've just seasoned it like a brisket, but I only use salt and pepper because I'm, I'm, I'm not using all the other stuff at the moment. Um, and I did the low and slow in the oven. So that recipe will be up probably later in the week, later, maybe early next week. Um, uh, and it, the oven's beeping at me. It will stop beeping. I'm not getting up to fix that now. That will be ha ha happening. Um, and you'll see I'm having, I'm having, it, so it's like the flat, it's like a brisket flat. It's the continuation of the brisket further up where the flat end is. That's why it's called the navel end. Um, and it's delicious. Oh, can't wait for it. I showed you the uh, smoked uh, burnt ends, I called them. Beef belly burnt ends. This is beef belly um, oven roasted. Yeah, roasted it like an oven. So, <clears throat> day 81, I I made prawns. And, oh, for Paul and I, sorry, I cooked prawns and some pork. Um, the pork from that pork knuckle that I had left over. I had most of the pork <laughs> left over. And uh, I, Paul and I, we had that for breakfast. Then I had a couple of whipped tallow pucks which I've run out of and I've now got a dilemma because the whipped tallow from the Wagyu is so soft. It's not the same. I've whipped it. It's turned into cream. It hasn't turned into stiff um, tallow. So it's sort of thrown me a little bit. Um, but today, because the sous vide's finished, I'm actually going to wet render some beef tallow I've got, had in jars for a while and I'm going to see if I can get the, the beef smell and taste out of that. And if I can, I'm going to use that to whip up. Um, that's not Wagyu fat, it's regular fat. So then I had, I made these crunchy beef and bacon nuggets. I did overcook them slightly, but they're still delicious. It's just the bottom of them got a bit, a little bit very dark brown. And then I made an omelette. Now, I, I only had a little bit of it. I think I had more of it the next day. Did I have it the next day or did Paul eat it? Uh, it should be on here. Um, it was pork, bacon, and I put a little bit of panko, um, leftover panko in there and just cooked it all up. And look, omelettes are always delicious. And I had 109 grams of fat that day. So then Friday was day 82, 82. I had coffee with cream. I had two of those, yep, which is making me want this one right here, which I know it's not coffee, but let's pretend. <laughs> then <clears throat> I had my beef delivery and then late in the afternoon, uh, mid-afternoon, I had a big serving of pork belly and some beef crackle. Yum, yum, yum. And I had more of the omelette from the day before because I'd cooked it up and then I sort of hadn't. And I had 85 grams of fat that day. Then on Saturday, Emma and Ellie um, came over. And so you know what I did? Get ready for it. Are you ready for it? I made spring rolls, sausage rolls, and money bags. Carnival. What? How did I do that, you ask? I'm so glad you asked. Chicken skins, people. Chicken skins. So, what does that mean? I will show you a little bit of footage. I will put the recipe up. Um... I'll tell you about that in a second. But first of all, in the morning, I had some whipped tallow and a fatty tea. That's going well for me. I am I like to have options. I, I get bored, so I like to rotate 
my drinks in the morning. And then I had a big bowl of beef and broth. So I'm calling it a beef bowl. Could call it a beef stew, but there's nothing else in it. There's no nothing. There's no carrots. Pardon me. There's no potatoes. There's no celery. There's nothing. Onions, nothing. So we'll call it a beef bowl. Let's call it a beef bowl. The broth is outstanding. You must keep your broth. Whatever you're, whenever you're cooking and you don't want to eat it, don't eat it if you don't want to. Pour it into a container. I use my super cubes. I love them because they're portions. But I've noticed I got them quite a few years ago. And I've noticed there are other brands now. Um, but the the great thing is you, you portion them and put the lid on. And they're made of silicone. And they can also use be used in the oven. So you, I've cooked little loaves, little mini loaves in the one cup um, a few times. And the two cup. The two cup is a wide square, a beautiful square square. And then I made all the spring rolls. So basically you use chicken skins. You make your mince meat mixture inside and then you roll them up in different versions. So the money bags I tied in string and they look like little money bags and they would be great deep fried. I didn't deep fry them. I ended up cooking them. I will show you in the Ninja Air Fryer. My gosh, they are a game changer. Oh, wow. And the sausage rolls, I left that. the meat peeking out on the end, but the spring rolls, they all get wrapped up and totally rolled and wrapped. So good. And then I had more beef stew and... Then, oh, Paul cooked crispy lamb. So we have, we do eat lamb. I don't eat very much lamb, but I do find it very rich. So I I can only have it every now and again. But crispy lamb and crispy lemon lamb is one of the things we really love. He didn't use any lemon, probably because Emma and I are doing carnivore, I'm guessing. But you cook those lamb chops within an inch of their life and they're crispy and all the fat is caramelized and crispy with like some lovely salt on there and then the meat is tender because they're four quarter chops right so i i didn't record that because paul cooked um and we had some spring rolls with it i had some spring rolls with it sorry everyone did but yes but emma bought she went and made she brought it over with her a shallot and ginger sauce now when i say sauce it's basically oil it's just basically shallots and ginger chopped up and I had some on, I'll show you, on my lamb and my spring rolls. Wow. Now, she didn't know I was making these spring rolls. Um, I put some ginger powder in there. And did I use a little bit of coconut? Did I use a little bit of coconut aminos? Mm, it's a bit like soy sauce coconut aminos. And I've been having it for years and it agrees with me. And I allowed, I've allowed myself, uh, you know, on my protocol, whatever you want to call it, it's on my list of what I can have. I didn't use it at all in the first couple of months. I've used it a few times in the last month just to um, to season a few things. But um, I can't remember. Oh, I wish I'd have put some lemongrass, chopped lemongrass. That would have been amazing because they're, you know, spring rolls are quite Asian. Anyway, she she was telling me she made this sauce and, and then and we were on a call and I said, well, you should see what I've made you. And then I sent a little photo just to just to get her excited. And she was like, mum, shall I bring some of this sauce? And I went, yeah. So that was amazing. That was amazing. And look, oh, no, that's fine. Then on Sunday was day 84 and it was my dad's birthday. Oh, sorry, that was 111 grams of fat. On Saturday and then on Sunday um, we had bacon and eggs for breakfast Paul and I and then I had a big serve of pork belly then um, mid-afternoon I had some roast pork some pork crack oh no that was for dinner sorry the dinner when um, for the birth for dad's birthday I had roast pork because Paul cooked a roast his roasts are amazing pork crackle with with it and a chicken wing one or two chicken wings i think i had a little bit of chicken with some chicken skin mm -mm, roasted um and then later in the evening i was sort of feeling like i needed some fat because i hadn't really the previous days hadn't been very high 
So I had some, I got a few beef nuggets, of the beef nuggets I'd made, and I grabbed my jar of beef butter and I just spooned out several spoonfuls and I just spread it. I had it cold. I did not heat that up because I think I've, I've t mentioned it before, but um, my goal in going high fat was to not have liquid hot fats because that really messes with your stomach, especially while you're um, transitioning. So I had 130 grams of fat that day. I had, um, that was so delicious. Putting that beef butter on those beef nuggets. I've only got a couple left now. And Emma, she actually brought over some chicken nuggets that she'd made. I think she used chicken mince or was it chicken breast? Anyway, rolled in panko, pork panko. That's that's more or less all there is in it. But <laughs> And then day 85. So we'll just do five days here. Um, I, I cooked up a big batch of prawns um, because I found a really great bag of prawns that were really good quality. And, you know, when you open them and it doesn't smell like fish, that's fresh. You know they've been frozen fresh. When you open fish and it smells like fish, mm -mm. it's not off. I'm not saying it's off, but it's not fresh. It's It's been a while. So I was so pleased because I bought them from Farmer Jack's. I didn't find any meat there, but I saw their prawns and I smelt the bag. And I know it's frozen, you can't, but really you can smell. When, when fish isn't fresh, you can smell it. So you can smell that frozen bag. I smelt it, couldn't smell anything. So it should smell like um, ocean water. That's what fish should and seafood should smell like. Should smell like the ocean, right? Shouldn't smell like fish. Anyway, so I thought I'll take a chance. It was a kilo. It was $20, I think, really good price, $18. Mm, it was a week ago now. Uh, it was a good price anyway. And so I bagged them up. I just split it up into four bags. Um, and I, I cooked a whole bag and I cooked it in a lot of tallow. It was so good. Like three or four tablespoons of tallow. And prawns just suck it up like um, eggs. They just suck up the fat. So that's good for me. Um, and I had, I also cooked some beef crackle once that was sort of cooking in the fry pan. I then added the beef crackle towards the end because all it needed was a little bit of heat and a little bit of crisp. And, and then really four o'clock in that afternoon, I did cook up a big scotch and I didn't eat it all. I couldn't eat it all, but I cooked the whole thing. It was my last scotch fillet of the roll that I bought from Farmer Jack's. I need to go there and see if I can get another one. Um, I had pork belly and fat crackle, beef crackle with it as well. So that was a beautiful, big, fatty meal that sort of was like two meals because I cooked it, ate half, <laughs> and then I ate the other half three hours later. So, And that was 150 grams of fat that day, exactly, of, you know, according to my estimations. So that's me. That's what I've been eating and what I've been doing. Um, I've got... Um, I'm looking forward to the next vlog. The next vlog, so today is Thursday and it's day 88. And tomorrow's day 89 and Saturday is day 90. Now, it doesn't mark the end, but it does mark um, a transition or a, a new goal with new um, targets and new, maybe new rules. Who knows? I will tell you in the next vlog because I will do day 86, 87, 88, 89 and 90. So after Saturday, I will create the vlog that will see the accomplishment of my goal. My husband said to me yesterday, I'm so proud of you. You have done so well. You're in you, you're in your flow. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I've got momentum. Mmm, yum. Well, I hope you're going well. Please tell me how you're doing. Um, has anyone else used magnesium and turmeric together? I would love to know what you think of it and what you used it for and, and was it helpful? Um... I'm wondering if I'm I bought this because of joint pain in my right knee. I'm wondering if it's connected to arthritis or anything like that. So 
I did have a diagnosis many years ago in that right knee. Um, but it hasn't proven to be as painful as it is right now. It's just awful. So anyway, let's not leave on a low note. Let's leave on a high note. Um, again, thank you for all your support on the channel. I really appreciate your comments and, you know, liking and subscribing and all that. It's, it, it, it does mean a lot. And I, I just, more than anything, I just love to hear from you guys. So I hope you're doing well. And I'll send you love. And I will see you in the next video. Oh, oh, wait, one mom. Okay. Yesterday, when Emma came, she took some photos of me in my shrinky pants these pants that stick to my legs okay now these legs i've spent a lifetime hiding right i'm wondering whether i should share the video or share it in the next video i wasn't going to share it at all right now i was going to keep it but you know what i didn't feel bad i didn't feel bad i didn't feel bad when i saw the photos I like, normally it's just like, yes, I see them and they're there. <laughs> I'll keep them for later. But I didn't feel bad. And so I just wanted to say that out loud, really. It was pretty cool. Um, and it doesn't hurt that they're a pair of pants I haven't been able to wear for a few years. I bought them as one of the layers to go to New York because it was when we went there. That was in 2018 or 2019. I'd have to check. Um, end of the year. So it was snowing and, and we knew it was going to be cold. So I took um, pants that can sit under pants. So that, you know, to keep me warm. Layers. As well as, you know, a system of tops and puffer jackets and different things. Beanies. I oh, love it. Love it. Um, so I have not worn these pants the other day I went diving in my wardrobe, shopping in my wardrobe and found a few things and thought, I wonder if they fit me. So I tried a couple of things on and they were close, but I don't, I, I wouldn't have worn a couple of tops. But then these pants, I got them out and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to wash them. I mean, they're already clean, but because I haven't worn them for so long, good couple of years, I thought I'm just going to wash them give them a fresh wash and then I'll just hang them back up again and try them on a little while later. But I tried these pants on easy and pants is the thing for me. That's just always been hard. So, um, because my bottom half is got that situation going on with, uh, lipedema and stuff. So I was feeling so good about that. And then, and Emma had said to me a few days before, mum, it'd be good for you to take a photo with clothes that stick to you because I mean, she was amazed at my thumbnail. I mean, like, I was so brave to share that thumbnail. I wasn't going to. That was just an internal <laughs> comparison. But I felt, I just felt so encouraged that that's why I, I shared it and made it public. Um. Anyway, and she said to me, see if you can take a photo, you know, when you're feeling good about that of tight clothes. So I did. So I did. So uh, you will see it soon. You will see it in one of the vlogs. I'm not sure if I'll put it in this one, but I'm feeling good about it. I just, it just has to be from your heart, right? When you share things like that, just has to be um, honest and real, you know, not forced or, but I just wanted to share that with you guys because you've been so encouraging for me and, um, and really encouraged me a lot with my thumbnails. So that was, that was really lovely. Really lovely. All right, I'm going to go. I will see you on the flip side in the next vlog. Take care of yourself. Look after yourself. Do what you need to. Bit of self-love, self-care goes a long way. Bye.